Now we're talking about the church today, so in effect I'm saying the church is a jar of rocks. The pastor went out and stole a whole bunch of the chip bricks from the front of the church. But you know they fit in quite well because um, when you look at what Jesus said about belonging, he was talking to Peter in Matthew 16, 18, and he says to him, Peter, you are Petros, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the word Petros is an interesting word, isn't it? It doesn't just mean pebble. In effect, really technically it means a chip of a rock off of a bigger rock. Peter, you are a chip off of a rock, and I am the big rock. And upon this I will build my church three vital pillars, three vital pillars that's uh, going to answer our question of belonging today from God's standpoint. And those three pillars are this, how we belong because we are the same, how we belong because we are different, and to what action does God call us because we are the same and different. One of the ways we are the same in here if we are part of this living body, if we really belong, is that we are all honestly seeking God. We're the same in the way that we're saved. Romans 3, 23 through 25, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood. Start with this, as everyone in here started out dead. And in that we accepted his righteousness and we, we took it propitiation as one of those fancy words that simply means to trade places, to make a, a trade. God traded with you and I if we're one of these Petros. We traded our guilt for his innocence. We traded our punishment for his honor. We traded our sinful blood for his perfect blood. It, it was a trade going our identity before the Heavenly Father with his identity. So we did this. This is how we're all saved. Nobody in here who's in a right place with God came there in any other way. We're all the same in quality. There's a list. Paul was pretty good about giving the nature of the list. He was talking to the church in Galatia and he was talking about how the transformation works and there are qualities that we're supposed to be taking on and I say taking on almost like if you've ever seen a fossil how it works to petrify it, it's not automatically stone you have a skeleton or a piece of tree trunk or something and atom by atom the rock takes the place of the plant and then eventually you end up with a fossil. That's kind of how we are. But the idea that we're on our way to becoming the Petros, we're at least working in that direction. And there's a list of things that say, if you're this, you're Petros. And if you're not, then you're not that pebble. You are not the thing that belongs. And I might give them a, uh, a name. There's a spirit list. And that either earmarks your life or it doesn't. And then there's a flesh list, and that either earmarks your life or it doesn't. If we start with the spirit list, because that's what would describe uh, our rocks. But the fruit of the spirit, I'm in Galatians 5:22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things there is no law. And those who are Christ's have uh, crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So all of those qualities, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, all become a quality of the chip off the old block because that's the Spirit of God. That's the fruit of God. On the other hand, there is a flesh list. 
And actually, he gave it first. He started in Galatians 5.19. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissension, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if, if the, the destiny of the church with Christ as the head is that everyone who is a called out one, if you remember previous sermons, who is a called out one, a saint for a holy purpose, and they are belonging in here, the destiny of this is the kingdom of God on earth and then in eternity. That's the destiny. It's not the destiny of that ball. No matter how many times it comes and visits the jar, it is not the destiny. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. There is a list of qualifiers that say whether you're the rock and a list that says you're not. Now, none of us are perfect but we are called to be sloughing off the bad list, the flesh list, and we're supposed to be growing into the spirit list. That's what makes you a rock. That's what makes a rock a rock. They have a collective mission. Well, what mission could rocks possibly have? Well, one thing we know about rocks is they're heavy. But the thing about gravity is all of these rocks, if they're doing nothing else, they're all putting a downward force in the same direction. And because they are, wherever this thing is sitting, it leaves an imprint. That's a lot like the church, isn't it? We're all supposed to be pulling in the same direction with the same nature. And if we're doing that, we leave an imprint. We leave an imprint wherever God happens to put us down. We're called to the same collective mission. Well, then how are we different? Well, we can just look at the reality of life is that we all come from different starting points. And as God has given grace and as God gives direction, we come from that and together we make a balanced body. That's what it's all about. We're not all meant to be the same shape. That's not part of the deal. We're different not cookie cutter. And most of all, we have different spiritual gifts. There's the biggie. Is that's why the shapes are really different, is the spiritual capacities God puts in once we start taking on the shape of being a chip off the old block, being a Petros. You look at this, this is all the nature of bricks going on in this jar. That's what it means to be belonging to the church we belong because we're the same in Christ. We belong because we're different in the grace of Christ. And then we do what we do because we belong. Do you belong? Why do you belong? Or it might be, why do you feel you don't belong? Are you a Petros? <laughs>